Brand Zone Brands. Hey, what's up, everyone? This week, we're talking about the brand of you. What's that mean and how can it work to your advantage? Check it out. In a world where content is king and your reputation is your brand, how do you build a brand that matters? Welcome to Brands on Brands, a home for those that think different and push their boundaries. This is where branding that matters lives. Now, here is your host, Brandon Berkmeyer. Hey, 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 what's up? Welcome to Brands on Brands. I'm Brandon Berkmeyer, your personal branding coach, and I'm here to help you build the brand of you as we are talking about today. I believe that building a brand that matters is the only way for a person, for a business to thrive tomorrow. And that's what we're diving into today. But if you're new here and you are a first time listener to the show or a recurring listener to the show, make sure you go to brandsonbrands.com and check out our content there as well and our resources for solopreneurs like yourself, for coaches like yourself. Lots there for you beyond the podcast here. And if you're looking to work with someone to help build your brand, whether it's the the actual messaging you use to describe yourself or how to create content in a system for creating content like a podcast or a blog, uh, reach out and let's talk about what we can do together. Reach out as brandsonbrands.com forward slash coach and you can find a schedule there. Uh, and then let's jump into the show. Brands on Brands. All right, let's get started. Brand you, the brand of you. What does that mean? How does that get built? And what is that? What's the importance of that? Why does that matter? Well, this got started for me because when I was, you know, when I'm thinking back about this, this is coming up the other day. And I was like, what does this even mean? If I had to describe the people, personal branding or the brand of you or branding yourself, what does that mean? Why is that important? Well, when I was working, and I've told the story before, but when I was working in a corporate job, my brand was very simple. You know, I was an employee that had a resume that did a job that fit into a very particular career path, right? That was my brand. That was who I was. That was my reputation. But the problem with that is it didn't lend itself to growth. It wasn't a valuable brand in that it was just like a lot of other people. You could take me and my resume and you could insert me into any of that same position at any company. And then you could take me out and put a new person in with that same title. It wasn't really ownable. And, you know, as they say, if you're talking about products, I was becoming a commodity and it's weird to talk about people as commodities, but it's true. It happens. If you are replaceable, you are a commodity. If they could just farm your job out to the next lowest bidder, you are a commodity. Now, the key is how do you make yourself into something that people want that is irreplaceable? And that's when this kind of idea of a brand came, came about for me. And really, when I was thinking about it at the time, I wasn't thinking of it as branding. I was thinking of it as, you know, I have a resume and I'm worried that eventually that resume won't be enough that there's going to be too few jobs at the top and too many people applying for them, that there's no guarantee there. And that created a lot of fear in my world. So I said, you know, what can I do to stand out and be different and to chart my own path, to be in charge of my fate? And really I thought to myself, well, what matters is reputation. You know, a resume is great, but reputation is what matters. And all I was, was a resume. I had no reputation and that was a scary thought. And I hope a lot of you out there have moved past this, but I'm sure a lot of you haven't. A lot of you are are experiencing that same thing. But if you're building your reputation or you're thinking about building your reputation for the first time, it's huge and it's important. And we talked about in the last episode, you know, a couple of ways to, to start doing that and to identifying, you know, who you are and tapping into, you know, knowing yourself and, and how to really get connected to what that brand is. But The reason that this is important, the reason that this can help you, that building the brand of you can help you uh, is threefold. And I've broken it down to three things, really. One is you want to be findable, you want to be recognizable, and you want to be desirable. So what that means is to start off when 
people are looking for something in particular, a person to fill a role, a solution to a problem, and they go to their normal means of finding those solutions, whether it's a Google search or a a referral from a friend, you know, they ask their friend groups for a to solve a problem or they ask a question or they're, you know, reading a book on something, you want to be able to be found as one of the answers, right? You want to be referred. You want to be found in a Google search. You want to be referred to in a book or in a a blog post or in a, in a YouTube video, you want to be findable. And at very least, if you meet them in person and then they do a little research on you afterwards and they Google you, you want to be findable. And Tim Ferriss talks about this a lot. He mentions, you know, like, what is it that people find when people Google search you? And how do you change those results? Uh, How do you become more findable with what you want them to find? How do you position yourself with the information that you want put out there about you, as opposed to what just randomly was gathered about you? Uh, So that was the first kind of aha moment for me was figuring out, well, what is it that I want people to find and how do I get them to find me? You know, and it started with this idea of creating more content and putting things out there into the world that were findable and creating a website and creating social profiles and creating a presence, you know, actually existing out there in my perspective. And that created some findability for me. And it started small, but as, you know, I started to do that more and more and getting, you know, opportunities to speak in other platforms uh, and branching out every chance I got. I became more findable and at very least in the digital world, but also offline because I was also growing my network and meeting more people, which also made me more findable in that way. You know, I started to be more places and the more people you meet, the more places you are and the more reputation you create online, the more findable you're going to be. So that was step one. Number two, the, the reason it was important is, you know, you don't just want to be findable, you want to be recognizable so that when people are looking for something over and over again, they start to recognize that you're the thing that keeps popping up over and over. And they start to say, you know, over time, they're becoming familiar with who you are and what you do, because maybe when they first stumble across you, they don't need something that you would be offering, but eventually over time, they might, you know, they might be in the market for that service or that kind of relationship or someone they know might be, and you come to mind because you've been present enough, you've shown up consistently over a long period of time that you've become recognizable. And that consistency is something I want to hammer home, right? When you start on this brand, you path, when you start on the journey of creating the brand of you, you have to recognize that it is a journey. It is you taking the first steps and committing to the process, the process of six months from now, 12 months from now, two years from now, five years from now, and from then on, that you are always curating your brand. You are always adding to that reputational cachet of experiences and things that you're building online, right? And that's what's beautiful about it is it's a huge snowball that you're continuing to add to. And once you've created some of this stuff, it doesn't go away. It just gets added to and built over time and it accumulates. And that's why consistency is so huge because if you can every week contribute in some way to your reputation, to the brand of you, it has a cumulative effect and a compounding effect on top of that. And that frequency of you showing up every day, all the time, every week, and you now interacting with people more and more and more over time becomes a contributor to you being recognizable in the world, in your industry, and in certain aspects that you serve. But the key to that is there has to be some Uh, not just consistency of you delivering and you showing up, but also with where, right? In other words, are you consistently showing up to the same group of people, to the same group of actions and behaviors and searches and industries? Because if I only experienced or created something once and I, I put it somewhere, you know, here and then tomorrow I did it somewhere completely else and I spread myself out, right? no one's going to be familiar enough or have engaged with me enough to remember. So recognizability or recognition comes from continuous exposure. And that's true in advertising as well. You need multiple uh, frequency of exposure to 
be memorable, right? So I think it, you know, it used to be three or more times was the magic number. Now it's seven or 10 that you, someone had to see your ad to remember it, right? So think of it like that. For you, how many times do you have to interact or be shown to someone or have them see your content or them to see your social profile or them to interact with you in person for them to start to remember you and recognize what you stand for and how you can help. And then the third piece is desirability. So for me, what this means is you don't just want them to find you and recognize who you are, and what you do. You also want them to desire to work with you, right? You want to be the thing that they say, this is what I need in my life right now. And that comes with alignment, right? So you being there over time has to align with them needing that opportunity, right? What they say is, is they say preparation plus opportunity equals luck, right? Like luck is just eventually you prepared enough that when an opportunity arose, you were able to step through the door and be there at the right time. And that's what this is about. You've now you know, been there consistently enough over time, and you've established that you know how to help and you are there, there for people that you become desirable in that way. People want to work with that person who's going to show up, who's going to be consistent, who was there when they were looking for them, and that they saw over time was still delivering. And that desirability can come in a lot of ways. You know, It can come with, obviously, just being around forever. It can come with referrals and with you actually doing good work and that reputation growing over time, it can come through testimonials and accolades. It can come through you taking on projects that people deem as important or influential or authoritative. You know, you write a book, you speak on a stage, you go on a podcast, you share your knowledge in a way uh, that helps them. You create a course, you put together some kind of digital product. All these things are one more element that contributes to the desirability of wanting to work with you or to buy something from you. You have to put that in front of them in the right ways at the right time with the right environment. And you have to do that consistently over time. That's what it means to be the brand of you. You consistently finding time and opportunities to do these things. That's why this is important because if you don't build the brand of you, you won't be findable, you won't be recognizable, and people won't want to work with you. You won't be desirable. What it takes is you investing in what does this brand look like and how do I develop this over time? So that's why this is important. That's why being just a resume isn't enough these days, especially if you want to be an entrepreneur and write your own ticket. That's why just settling in and hoping business comes to you never works. That's why just picking one service and offering that, but never building your reputation behind it doesn't work. That's why those businesses get driven to the bottom of price and become commodities. You know, avoid being commoditized, find a way to be findable, be recognizable and be desirable. That builds the brand of you. That's what I got for you guys today. Those are my, my three things for the day, findability, recognizability, and desirability, right? A recognition, if you will. I hope that helps. Hope those were some ideas that inspired thoughts for you to take just one step. This is a journey. Building a brand does take time. But with each of these little ideas and steps, I hope you are continuing to build the brand of you. And I hope that you found this enjoyable today. And I will catch you guys all next time. You've just taken your marketing knowledge to another level with this episode of Brands on Brands. But we have plenty more ways to help you build a brand that matters. Head over to BrandsOnBrands.com for resources, as well as access to our blogs, videos, and exclusive coaching sessions with your host. Be sure to visit BrandsOnBrands.com.